Good morning. Welcome back to a new week of English lessons. So for the next few weeks, we are going to be learning about instructions. And this week, we're going to be thinking about some really important parts of instructions, starting today with command sentences. So we're going to think about what imperative verbs are, which I'm going to explain in a few minutes. We're going to complete some command sentences and then we're going to write our own ones as well, making sure that they are actually commands. And if you're thinking, I don't actually know what a command is, I don't know what an imperative verb is, don't worry because we're going to talk about that now. So a command is a type of sentence. There are four different types of sentence, but we're just going to mention two now. So most of the time in our writing so far in year two, we have used what are called statement sentences and statement sentences. They describe things or they say what's happening. You'll have used them all the time without even realising it. They just have a posh name. So some examples from our sweet potato work of statements would be sweet potato trapped evil pea. And another one would be the supermarket was silent but a toilet roll slid along the floor. They are both statement sentences. So we will use some of these in our instructions, but to be proper instructions, we are going to use commands because instructions tell people what to do. So they need to be bossy. So this is your opportunity to be super bossy. So you're probably wondering, but Miss Odwire, what is a command sentence? So I'm going to tell you. So a command sentence tells you what to do and they can end in a full stop or an exclamation mark. It doesn't matter which, either of them. It probably depends on the sentence. So some examples that you might hear in school or during lockdown school are, took your chair in, I say that a lot to my class. Mute your microphone, which Mrs Lee and I have both said quite a lot. Quietly put your box on your chair. I know I say that every day at the end of the school day. Or be quiet, which is what you might be saying to your if you've got little brothers and sisters and they're being a bit noisy. So they're all command sentences and you can hear they're quite bossy. They're telling somebody they're commanding. That's what command means. Telling, telling somebody, commanding somebody to do something. So they're not quite polite, but they're being really bossy. Tuck your chair in like that. So if it sounds bossy, it's probably a command sentence. It's telling someone what to do. A really important part of a command sentence is the verb. And in a command sentence, they're called an imperative verb. And again, that just means bossy. So in commands, they're the action that you're being told to do. So in our sentences that we just talked about, tuck your chair in, mute your microphone, quietly put the box, your box on your chair and be quiet. The verb is one word and it is the action. So our imperative verbs in these sentences are tuck, mute, put and be. They're the verbs, they're the actions in these sentences and they are called imperative verbs. The whole sentence is a command telling someone what to do but those individual words, those words on their own are imperative verbs. Some people call them bossy verbs but we're going to use the proper word imperative verbs. They sound forceful. So now we know what imperative verbs are and now we know what commands are can you complete these commands below? So you need to think of an imperative verb that could go in each of these commands so that they make sense. So we've got hmm, up the rubbish. Next, hmm, the ingredients together. Carefully hmm, out the shapes using scissors. So you might want to pause the video and have a think what which verb could go in each of these sentences. There might be more than one possibility, but see if you can choose a verb to go in each sentence. So hopefully you pause the video. I would put here, pick up the rubbish. Next, mix the ingredients together or stir the ingredients together. Carefully cut out the shapes using scissors. But you might have chosen other ones. As long as they sound bossy, then that's fine. So what I'd like you to do now before the next bit of the video is pause again and think, can you think of some whole command sentences, perhaps things that people at home might say, people at school might say. And remember, you've got to be bossy. If you're starting with you should or you need to, it's not bossy enough. It's not a command. So like we've already done here, like be quiet. Can you think of some other command sentences that people say or that you've said to people? So pause the video and have a chat. So hopefully now you've got a good idea of what is a command sentence 
and what is an imperative verb. If you're not sure, remember, you can always watch the video again. So what you need to do now is in your work pack is a sheet that's called command sentences. You need to find that. You need to read on the sheet. You'll see there are some sentences that aren't quite finished. So you need to read those sentences and then choose an imperative verb to finish each one. And remember, it's got to be bossy sounding. It's got to be telling someone, commanding someone what to do. Once you've done that and remember, you might not have the same answer as someone else. There's more could be more than one possibility. Once you've done that, it's then asking you to have a go at writing some of your own command sentences. And it tells you a situation where you might need to be bossy and you can imagine something someone would say. You need to write those and remember just because it's a different type of sentence it still needs to start with a capital letter and it then needs to end with a full stop or an exclamation mark it's up to you then once you've finished i want you to check through your work make sure all that punctuation is there and then you can email it to me and mrs lee so i hope you enjoy being bossy and uh, good luck <laughs>